Hello everyone, welcome to our learning series of how to use Unreal Engine for architectural visualization. In this video, we're going to be talking about ray trace inside Unreal Engine and how to apply it in our project example. So let's get started by enabling ray trace and restart the engine. So first we're going to go to the project setting and go basically to the windows and enable the default RHI to DirectX 12. Now this is a very important step before going to the ray trace feature and hitting that uh, feature to enable it and immediately you will get a message to restart the engine to get the ray trace feature enabled. So I'm gonna restart now and come back when once the shaders compile. But uh, we're gonna restart the engine inside uh, the latest version of 4.25. And why is that? Because uh, the latest version of Unreal Engine 4.25 have lots of improvements uh, specifically for the ray trace features. So I'm going to restart now and come back later once the shaders compile. So now that we have uh, restarted our uh, project inside Unreal Engine 4.25, uh, as you can see the scene is dark because we have put all the intensity values of our uh, lighting uh, tools the direction light and the HDRI backdrop specifically the skylight to zero and rebaked uh, the light to make sure that we don't have any kind of uh, baked light uh, or shadows on top of our objects inside the scene. So to start uh, tweaking the ray trace uh, features uh, we're gonna put the skylight to one inside the HDRI backdrop. I've hided the foliage just to, to make sure that we have a, a, a better uh, performance inside uh, the ray with the ray trace enabled so i'm gonna hide also uh, the car objects and we're gonna go to the window uh, developer tools and click on the output log so we can tweak uh, the ray trace features through the console command so i'm gonna write r dot ray trace which you know, bring all the ray tracing commands as you can see starting with the skylight i'm gonna put it to uh, zero and as you can see, the lighting has been disabled. If I put it back to one, it's going to be enabled. And the reason uh, you should uh, or recommend it that you uh, tweak the ray trace with the console command, or at least have an idea of it, is that uh, you can start actually uh, building up some kind of a widget interactive inside your real time uh, presentation to enable or disable uh, these features, as we're going to do in our next video. So now that we have our uh, ray trace uh, skylight enabled, we can go for the second one, which is going to be the global illumination. So we're going to be ray trace. And if you go down here, you can see the global illumination. Or if you just going to click on G, it will bring it up. And hitting one will enable global illumination. As you can see, the effect have immediately come into our scene. To disable or enable these features, you're just gonna put a value of one or zero. One represent enable and zero represent uh, disable. So if we press the upper arrow key, uh, we'll bring the, the last command you have uh, we have put. So if you put it back to zero, as you can see, it will disable again. So the next thing we're gonna do is to enhance uh, our um, lighting quality by going to the lighting only. Let's see if we can play a little bit with the settings of our uh, skylight and global illumination. Now our frame per second is a little bit low because of the um, amount of shadows that's been calculated in our scene. And we are running this by the way on an RTX 2070. Of course it's a, a mid-range of RTX uh, card uh, which doesn't have a high performance but if you're running this on a 2080 Ti the frame per second for sure will be higher than that. So if we go back to our skylight and you go down here, you'll see that there are sample per pixel. And playing with this values, let's say for example starting with one, five, will enhance the shadows of your skylight uh, inside your scene. And the more you will uh, put uh, for this sample per pixels, will uh, improve. Um, the, the shadow calculation and the lighting. The same goes also for the global illumination, but to tweak the global illumination, you have also another way to do this. Uh, 
by the post process if you write here ray trace it will bring all the ray trace features uh, that you're gonna find inside the post process so we can mix up uh, the tweaking of the ray trace um, features between the output uh, output log and also the post process uh, features that Epic Games have developed lately. Of course, uh, two years ago this was not enabled inside the uh, post process, but now that we have this, let's start, for example, looking at the ray tracing global illumination. So we have two kind of uh, the global illumination. The one is uh, the first one is the brute force, and the second one is the final gather. The final gather actually is much uh, recommended, uh, is, is more recommended actually, because it gives you a, a better performance in terms of real time uh, uh, movements and a, a better uh, frame per second. So if we in, uh, put the sample pixel for example to 1 and the maximum bounces, let's put it for example to 15, it will definitely, as you can see, lower the noise uh, once you uh, stop for example uh, and put the the, the camera at this at the, at the point where it's start to uh, calculate uh, the bounces you'll see that the scene start to clear up so let's bring our let uh, scene and see how this is gonna go um, okay so jumping from brute force to uh, final gather you can choose which one uh, fit your scene depending on your frame per second um, uh, as it's being displayed so let's move to the next one which is the uh, reflection if we move to the reflection here in our uh, view mode now that we can see uh, the reflection is clear that means it is our uh, ray trace reflection is running so if we disable that by the log uh, command reflections if we put this to zero immediately you'll see that the reflection is a little bit fuzzy and that means that your uh, ray trace uh, reflection is not enabled so if we enable that by down to one see that the reflection now is clear and this is even without the help of a, sp uh, a sphere uh, screen reflections and if we go back to the let mode you're immediately gonna see the reflection on the floor of course also the the tweaking of the uh, the, the roughness and the bounces of the reflection here will improve uh, your uh, ray trace uh, quality if we put the maximum roughness to zero that means for example that uh, you'll have a zero of roughness let's put it here actually maybe it will uh, uh, be more visible maximum roughness if we put this to zero immediately you'll see that you don't see any kind of a roughness reflection represented in the material and this this is where you if you wanna for example want your performance to be higher so if we put this to one we're gonna start seeing your reflection so let's come over here and do this again by enable and disable and this is what I was referring to if you wanna uh, enable this feature uh, these features in your uh, widget uh, interactive uh, presentation uh, again as we have said in our next video we gonna show you how you can do that so uh, also the the next one will be is the uh, translucency uh, tracing translucency and immediately you'll see that your reflection comes on the glass and all of the other um, features uh, that we have enabled so far have uh, improved our uh, ray trace uh, quality and you can do that also by going to the each one of them let's say for example for the skylight again you have the maximum uh, samples uh, the samples per pixel and also uh, the denoiser for this one so if we put the denoiser to one it will also improve but it will as you can see the the frame per second have been affected or maybe it was just uh, sorry seems like if when I type that the, the mouse uh, control have been disabled so if we go back again uh, it's, it's very visible now that we have put the denoiser to zero you can see start to see some of the denoising available the noise available on the on our uh, skylight and if we put it back to one 
we start to see a clean and clear uh, calculation of the shadows of the objects. The same goes for all the other features. If we go also to the global illuminations, you'll find that you have also some of the sample per pixel. Increasing this again will improve the uh, global illuminations uh, presentation. One thing also man uh, worth mentioning, the global illumination is more uh, visible and more um, clear uh, how you want to um, uh, improve the sample per pixel for it inside the interior scene. For the exterior scene, because we have uh, also um, the lighting system and more of the information, more information in, uh, in, the, in a bigger scale uh, scene, it's very difficult to notice uh, the global illumination effect. So let's also increase the directional light intensity. So let's put it for example to 50. And maybe this is a little bit high. Let's put it to 40. We'll start to see also the effect of the sun, which looks really good in terms of um, a mixing of a, a skylight and a, a, a sun effect on top of, uh, of our uh, lighting uh, setup for the project. So, so far what we have uh, uh, seen Playing with the Oblog uh, commands and mixing this up with the post-process uh, ray trace features will help you uh, uh, build up a nice ray trace uh, quality for you. So you can use it for either producing a cinematic uh, video for your uh, project or also if you want to do a very fast uh, real-time uh, presentation, um, to, uh, let's say for example to your uh, clients or to your uh, uh, colleagues in your work and uh, again disabling and enable this is really easy to uh, by using the output look command inside the widget and this is what we're gonna do actually in our next video so I hope this was uh, clear uh, and simple regarding how to uh, tweak the ray trace uh, settings inside the Unreal Engine 4.25 and again we choose to uh, do this inside the latest version because uh, there was a lots of improvements uh, regarding the ray trace uh, development inside the engine uh, because we were doing all of the ba light baking and all of the uh, setup that we have done in all of our previous videos and 4.24 uh, so uh, again if you have any question please share it down in the comments and hopefully this uh, was uh, clear and simple for you and uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.